Hey there. This is ProGlab, your entertaining programming guru. Are you ready to dive into the exciting world of deep learning and image recognition? If the answer is yes, great. Let's get started by creating a simple convolutional neural network. These networks are like the superheroes of the deep learning world, and they're perfect for classifying all sorts of images. So, buckle up. But before that, be sure to subscribe to my channel. With new and exciting content every week, you won't want to miss out on all the fun and education. Click that subscribe button below and let's learn together. In this tutorial, we will classify images of digits 0 to 9. Based on a fancy deep learning network. And the best part? We don't even have to find the dataset ourselves, because MATLAB has got us covered with a pre-installed image dataset. So, sit back, grab a cup of coffee, and let's get cracking. Code I mean. In this tutorial, I will demonstrate to you. How to load and explore image data. How to define the network architecture. How to specify training options. How to train the network. How to predict the labels of new data and calculate the classification accuracy. So, let's jump right into the live script and write code for loading and exploring data. Before I started coding, I made sure to jot down the most crucial line of all, CLC, clear, close all. CLC will clear your command windows, clear will erase your workspace, and close will shut down any plots or extra elements in the MATLAB environment. Let's start with code to load and explore image data. This line of code will help us find the location of the digit dataset in MATLAB. It uses the function full file and its input arguments to construct the full path to the dataset, which is stored in the folder digit dataset. The first input argument, MATLAB root, is used to find the root directory of the MATLAB installation. With this line of code, we can easily locate the image dataset whenever we need it. The dataset we are using contains subfolders. These subfolders are named as digits from 0 to 9. Within each subfolder we have different number of images of the same label digit. This line of code uses the function image data store and its input arguments to load images from the digit dataset. The first input argument Digit dataset path, is the full path to the dataset that we found in the previous code line. The input argument include subfolders is set to true, which means that the function will include subfolders when storing images. And the input argument label source is set to folder names, meaning that the folder names will be used as the labels for the images. With this line of code, we have now stored all the images from the digit dataset, complete with their corresponding labels, ready for us to use in our project. After loading the image data store, let's take a moment to check out some of the amazing images we have stored in our data store. The code blocks we're looking at is used to plot 20 random images from the digit dataset. The first line uses the function randperm to generate a random permutation of 20 numbers from 1 to 10,000, representing the indices of the images we want to plot. The next part is a for loop that iterates 20 times, with each iteration plotting one of the 20 random images. The function subplot is used to divide the plot into four rows and five columns and place the current image in a specific subplot position. Finally, the function imshow is used to display the image, with the image file path being retrieved from the imds.files cell array using the current random index. By plotting 20 random images, we can get a visual idea of the data that we have stored in the imds image data store. This line of code counts the number of images for each label in the image data store IMDS and stores the result in a table format in the variable label count. It provides a summary of the image distribution across different labels in the dataset. You must specify the size of the images in the input layer of the network. Check the size of the first image in digit data. So, we will use function image read then use size function to find size of images. Each image is 28 by 28 by 1 pixels. Let's talk about specify training and validation sets in this section. This code line uses the function split each label to divide the image data store IMDS into two parts, IMDS train and IMDS validation. The input argument numtrain files specifies the number of images to be included in the training set imds train, 
while the remaining images will be included in the validation set IMDS validation. The randomize input argument tells the function to randomly split the images among the two sets, so that the training and validation sets are representative samples of the whole dataset. This line of code is important for students who are working with image data, as it provides a way to divide the data into a training set and a validation set. The training set will be used to train a machine learning model, while the validation set will be used to evaluate the performance of the model. Let's talk about how we define neural network architecture in MATLAB. It's time to get technical. Let's lay out the blueprint for our convolutional neural network. Think of this as designing the framework for our deep learning masterpiece. It's going to be great. Let's get started. This whole section of code creates an array of layers for a convolutional neural network, CNN. We're going to start by specifying the size of the image we're working with, which in this case is 28 by 28 by 1. That's 28 pixels tall, 28 pixels wide, and only one color channel because our images are in grayscale. Don't worry about shuffling the data, our training function takes care of that by default. Next, we're going to create a convolutional layer using filters that are 3 by 3 in size and set 8 number of filters, which will determine the number of feature maps. For a convolutional layer with a default stride of 1, same padding ensures that the spatial output size is the same as the input size. After that, we're going to add a batch normalization layer to normalize the activations and gradients, which will make the optimization process smoother. Following that, We'll add a ReLU layer to activate the network using the rectified linear unit function. Now, it's time for a bit of downsampling by adding a max pooling layer. We're taking the maximum values of rectangular regions of inputs, which will reduce the spatial size of the feature map and remove redundant information. We'll then add one or more fully connected layers, which will connect all the neurons from the previous layer to identify larger patterns in the image. The last fully connected layer will classify the images using the output size, which is equal to the number of classes in our target data. The final touch is the soft max layer, which will normalize the output of the fully connected layer and return positive numbers that sum to 1. This will be used as classification probabilities by the classification layer. Let me run this code section for you. And voila! That's how you build a simple convolutional neural network for image recognition. Don't forget to have some fun and be creative with it. Let's talk about specifying training options. This line of code creates an options object for training the convolutional neural network. The function training options uses the SGDM method, which is stochastic gradient descent with momentum, as the optimization algorithm. The initial learning rate is set to 0.01 and the maximum number of epochs is set to 4. The data for each epoch is shuffled, and the validation data is set to IMDS validation. The validation frequency is set to 30 and verbosity is turned off. Lastly, it creates plots to show the progress of the training process. Let me run this code section for you. Let's talk about how to train network using training data in MATLAB. So, let's get our network ready to learn. We'll use the architecture we defined with our layers, our training data, and some important training options to train our network. And the good news is, if you have a GPU, train network will automatically use it to train your network, making it super fast. Just make sure you have the parallel computing toolbox and a supported GPU device. Let us run this section to train our network model.
while our network is learning, we can keep an eye on its progress through the training progress plot. This plot will show us the loss and accuracy of our network as it trains, both on the mini-batch data and the validation data. The loss is a measure of how far off the network's predictions are from the true labels, and the accuracy is the percentage of images that the network has classified correctly. Let's classify validation images and compute accuracy with our trained model. This line of code is testing the accuracy of our trained neural network. It's like the final exam after all the hard work in the class. It's making a prediction for each image in our validation set, and then comparing that prediction to the actual label. And finally, calculating the overall accuracy by dividing the number of correct predictions by the total number of images in the validation set. It's like finding out how many A's you got on your exam. Thanks for joining me on this tutorial journey. I hope you now have a better understanding of how to train a deep learning network. If you enjoyed this tutorial and want to learn more about machine learning, then make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel for more exciting content. I would also love to hear from you, so feel free to post your questions and comments in the section below. Your feedback is important to me, and I look forward to hearing from you. So, hit that subscribe button and let's continue learning together.